Hey there, YouTube. Phantasma Knight. We're continuing Disco Elysium. Um, I have about like five different side quests I could do, but I'm not entirely watch sure what to do right now. Um, I can't figure out where I'm supposed to go to find uh, find the bullet traces. Yeah, check the boardwalk for bullet traces. Island Land's End. I'm assuming this is the boardwalk. I'm assuming this is either the, the island or Land's End. And there was another location somewhere over here, but... And this weirds me out. I realize the Ferris wheels on the wooden docks. That's not right. That's where we found the body. So why would you put it there? Check out my flashlight in case there's something we could miss. I thought I saw two blue markers earlier that I could click on, but I only see one now. Coordinates boat traffic in the bay. Barely. Can't cross that. Can't click that. Tab is showing nothing. We're just gonna go back down here. There were like one or th two things that popped up, but it was probably nothing. Probably some minor observation about this box I can't get in. Building before you housed the engine. Must have been a big one. You can't seem to walk over here at all. Okay, let's think. Well, what can we do? Um, we could give the stuff better to guard. We could sing karaoke. We could do some painting. We might have to get rid of Kim, though. I'm not sure how he'd feel about us using government oil. Heavy duty government oil? Oh, I don't know why it's government oil. Like, doesn't everyone use oil? And it's not like there are, like, tanks or anything around here, right? It's just. It, it's a motor carriage. It's a car. It's a government issued car. What does that have special oil? Okay, uh, you know, I should probably take a moment and, oh yeah, talk to, I can't cross through here, got it. Talk to the derps over across the water, tell them that a uh, scientist lady does not want them, d does not want them starting up a nightclub with that dreadful music of theirs, and potentially fail three side quests because I can't get them to like me because I didn't successfully get them in the nightclub. Before that, let's see, should I... Yes, I should. Before I forget, I'm going to interact with some items. Um, let's see, stuff, grouse, taxidermy. Is that how you pronounce it? Grouse? Maybe it's grouse. Grouse. I'm going to call it grouse. Rouse? No, the, without the G, it would be rouse, so grouse. Right? Right? I'm just going to call it grouse for now. The dead body of a grouse stuff with some unknown material. From distance, it might just pass off as the real thing. The, f the bird itself looks extremely rough on and slightly grumpy. Let's see. Banged up fuel canister. Dentist stainless steel canister for transporting storing heavy fuel oil. The logo on the side has been partially stripped over years of use. The government issued red dye of fuel oil. Looks much like paint, although it smells much, much worse. Yes, we already read that before. And I think I re read it with better book inflection. Wait, I thought I. Pass over the figurine. And I never figured out what was going on with the stuttering. Uh, I forgot to look that up. Did I load and lose something? Because I thought I got a tape. Oh, here we go. Tape you found from a shack on the coast. The A side has smallest church in St. Saints written on it, while the B side is supposed to contain the instrumental version. Requires a boombox to play. Library card. The library card is Billy is a unisex name. Wait, I Could think we already looked this, yep. Okay, the audio bug is bothering me, and uh, how did I forget to look that up? Because I probably put this game completely out of my mind in between streams. Hello again. Your associates tried to use me to set up a drug lab. I'm guessing you knew this plan. I did, and I'm sorry. For what it's worth. Which isn't much. Hmm. This is why I didn't go into the tent. Typical delinquency. Uh -huh. You don't get to choose your posse, they choose you. Mine are idiots, but they're mine. I tried to talk Andre out of it. You should have tried it harder. Misleading a cop is no joke. I know. I should have been able to control them. And I will in the future. I promise. Despite the fact that you yourself are high? May I ask? 
What did you tell them? Do what you will with your dance club plans. Just no drug labs, please. Thank you. I'll get them under wraps. I promise. I gave her a hat. I gave her my hat. It was mine. Damn dick mullet. And hopefully not just a dick. <laughs> okay. Hi again. So, uh... About the church, I checked it out. And? What happened? I talked to the crap man. Oh, man! Who is he? What did you think? You seem okay, to be honest. Very spiritual. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? Clearly enjoys the physical activity. Guy climbs like a freak. <laughs> Although, he's kind of preaching and praying from the looks of it. No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Not him, it's the other one. Yeah, Lloyd is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never <laughs> catch him. There's nothing to do. Let's see. Actually, it told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time? Don't worry, I don't think he really gives a damn about you or anyone else. I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can always go talk to him if like something goes weird and maybe he'll spot it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! Yeah! He's gonna be dancing around the rafters. No one's gonna be able to join him. Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes. Did you see her? Using the mainframe when Suna, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident, appeared. A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? She did not like that Nordic dance club idea. What a pity. That's my favorite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam and into a laser lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! She made it very clear that she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict her? No. No, I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you, honor man. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. She ain't here, Isabel. that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist, coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's odd. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like a nodded dance music? She absolutely does not. Really, truly despises it. Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. Dude, if he just keeps pumping his arm like all day, all night, that's gotta be real tiring. His arm's gonna be, well, I was gonna say buff, but probably just sore as all heck just from doing that. No worries, we'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? Both these are pursuing proceed with the quest. I refuse to throw her out, but I can try convincing her. Like, seriously, she's doing more than you guys are. You're like, like, oh, we found this abandoned place and we're gonna muscle on in. Well, guess what? She made it there first. Excellent. Good luck, my friend. Oh, boy. Goodbye, officer. I'm assuming these guys won't talk to me for now. I see you here again. Offside, man. Okay, let's get out. I don't want to mess with that lady. She's doing her thing, trying to clear her name, trying to figure out what the heck is going on, and I can respect for her for that. Hello again. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. We can talk to her about the crab man. Oh, that. She's less prone to blood. Okay. She was dressed like someone who's, been... and then he stopped. Like a crab, you say? <laughs> I saw him. I saw the crab man. You saw him. Does it mean that you went in there? 
Did you see the other spooker, the one in Grandma's clothes? Yes, I saw them both. Good, so you believe me. You should go tell this to Andre. He'll know what to do next. Uh, we already talked to Andre. Let's check what we got in terms of, uh, quest details. Yeah, I'm not gonna evict her. Why the frick would I? Okay, I kind of don't want to deal with that. We'll probably go back there to offer more figurines to the... Oh, wait. We're not offering figurines to the to the goddess statue. It's if we, if we ever meet her. Even though she died 300 years ago. Although, Medoro and I did suspect that might be some kind of time loop thing in Bobber. But, you know, let's not... Uh, let's mess with that because we're right here. And then we'll move on from here. Quickly. Don't want to spend too much time here. Lots of running around circles, which is fine, but... Uh, can't be the most interesting thing to watch. Nice and quiet in here, though. Yes, what is it? Well, you didn't have to leave. I talked to Andre, and he wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work. She replies, six percent of change. Hold on, you don't want to make anything work. Yes, anything i don't want to make anything work all right got your message good suggest her to cooperate with the ravers because her research is not going well uh, okay well we could definitely buff our suggestion a little bit just a bit though although uh, there's a lot of clothes to go through suggestion are you here we can use some help Oh, that's drama. Minus one suggestion. Do I have enough health to uh, pop a Ooh, plus one suggestion? Okay, okay. Hang on. Minus one suggestion. Yeah. We don't have a minus one for anything else, right? Okay, uh, but the suggestion is... I almost clicked on the, the meds. Suggestion is psyche, of course it is. Okay, we'll come back here later. For now, I'm gonna put the flashlight back on and switch out to the better looking coat. I'm gonna do it in a trench coat with, like, chest hair showing through, but, you know... It's not like we're actually naked, you can see that we have pants. I, uh, why, why did I... Why did I say that? It's just, if you see some weirdo to running around at night in a big old trench coat, there are certain... There are certain implications in certain stories, I should say. Trench coats themselves are fine. They're perfectly fine. And I really should not imply otherwise. That's just not nice. Wait, travel here. I can fast travel. I can fast travel. How long does it take, though? It's twenty thirty forty, and let's uh, let's jump all the way over here. Of course, it doesn't take any time because time only passes when you talk to people. That's great. Uh, let's see if uh, the precincts are working at this time. Eleven fourteen p.m. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. This is precinct fifty-seven. How may I assist you? I need a reported dead body in the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. Here, shuffling through some papers. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? Unidentified middle-aged man. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk, and hit his head against the metal bench. Uh, could I try to figure this out in inches? It's roughly 2.5. Uh, I don't want to divide this by 2.5. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him, and traces of vomit on his shirt. Yep, that. Any signs of violence? No, seems it, like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. She repeats. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and all other jacket with a bright blue lining. 
I found a library card from his pockets. Uh, any information on the library card? It's from Central GM Rock Club Library. Belongs to someone named Billy Mehien. Good. You have a lead. Do you Mejian? and Mr. Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking it. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? The library. I'm afraid they're closed. It says here that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Oh, that's right. That's why I didn't go back quicker. We should try again. And because we had a bunch of stuff. Time. So, 10 a.m. Anything else, detective? Uh, connect me to the 41st. Just a moment. 10 4, come in, officer. Over. Wow, you guys are working late. I'm happy to report that I have found my badge, Jules. 10 4, sir. Glad to hear that. I'll write down that there is no need to issue a new one to you then. Over. Alright. Over. Roger that. 10 10. Over and out. Okay, and. I don't think we had any other cosmic for now. Guard's probably in there. Let's give him a bird. One of the Hardy Boys are still here. And I. There's lots of people here. Huh. Okay, so we might be able to grab the key um, in the evening. I didn't think this door would still be open. Oh, did we lose our chance to talk to the the guy in the, in the wig? Or is he going to show up the next night? Uh, let's see. Where do I... Oh, map, and then we didn't see the things. Scaring bullet holes. Shoot, I should have checked that out. Well, we could fast travel back, that's fine. Just not indoors, apparently. And I'm going to check out the cargo door container again. Wait, the cargo container door. What the... F what the heck was with my <laughs> phrasing there? Measure head, yeah. The map wall. Interfacing, challenging. Uh, the church was, we don't need to do it, we got in. Ah, right, we're gonna try this after we rest it up. Okay, Guard, got something for you. Can I help you? Guard, I found a new bird for the whirling. What is this thing? It takes a stuffed bird. It's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall, I'm that kind of cop. But he does not... S he sounded like he was almost like... Horrified at this thing, or you know, grossed out, or something. Is he actually excited? I can't tell. What the interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird, a competent piece of taxidermy. Well, I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So I don't know. Thank you. I'm gonna go with thank you. Uh, why does it seem like you're considering other options? Do you hate me that much? I mean, I guess I can't really blame you, but... People just don't know how to accept gifts. Especially taxidermy. He likes it. He likes the bird. It solves his broken bird problem. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. <laughs> Which I got from a little girl. This thing actually... A taxidermy cannot be cheap. I doubt there's a massive market for it. I mean, I, I doubt there's a massive supply for it. There's probably a demand for it. It's not actually about that, but he liked it. <laughs> Goodbye. Did I get XP for it? Please give me XP for it. I did get XP, right? Yes, maybe. Maybe. Perhaps I can hang up the wall. Okay. Uh, let's see, sing karaoke. What does it take to sing karaoke? Okay, look, I'm gonna save, just... Quick save. Just in case this screws something up. Like, if I only get one shot, then I can't, like, undo it. Interact. <laughs> the portal reel is just what you needed. The reels attached to the apparatus with play, a satisfying press play. click. You press the large button marked Commencer, and the tape starts spinning. There's press a small delay before the song speak. starts playing. No, keep it at the harmless distance. 
Then the organ starts playing a simple, melancholic tune echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in, telling you about the tiniest church in Sessongs, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Within seconds you know, this is the one, the real shit you've been looking for. The one you trust your room to that Classia told you about. Perform it. A click. Then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. Uh... It was Inland Empire. Oh, Inland Empire was for, like, our impression of that. Hmm. Can I sing this for karaoke? I think I could sing this. Of course you could sing this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it, like, a million times. Yes, but how many of those, uh, times did I forget? Because if I forgot to 900,000, eh, I might still be able to do it. Yep, they're all here. All three verses. And the B-side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands on your way. What? Gott, you have to convince Gott to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. I mean, this is a lot better than threatening to shoot yourself. The lieutenant looks at you as you remove the tape from the boombox. He doesn't say anything. <laughs> I'm a little scared. Hey, was there something you needed? Well, well. Bringing in that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. Guard, I need to sing karaoke now. No, you don't. It's not happening. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. This is my way of apologizing for the trouble I've caused. Please, let me say I'm sorry. By causing more trouble, I think we're good. Uh, it's why my quest of self-discovery help me. The Whirling's not a charity or a musical therapy clinic. It's a commercial establishment. You're going to scare away the customers. Yeah, but why do you even have the PA system? You're not going to use it. It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. What happened in 44? That was, what, seven years ago? I keep forgetting what year it is. 51, 52? A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. What? Excuse me? Huh? How's that how's that work? You figure the a-hole would just go and sing. Weird. When's the last time you had a band player? It's not for bands, it's for clients. Some clients, okay? Not you. I'm a real client. I paid my bills and I have the right to use the karaoke machine. I guess I didn't pay it tonight though. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. It's all right. I have my own song with me. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. This is the look of a man who's defeated. <laughs> he knows he's out of excuses. Too kind of bad for him, but... Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. Okay, we need to check what kind of check this is. And it just auto-saved. Great. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. This got to be a red check, isn't it? You feel a little dizzy. A little unsteady, suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Drama. Put your lips against the microphone, test it. Immediately, a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing into it? Where should you stand? Hands. Where do you put your hands? 
Look around the room for us. Drama. Jeez. What? Oh my fudge. How does testing it make it worse? Look around the, the room. The bar is full and buzzing with chatter. No one is paying you any attention. But still you feel your knees turn to noodles. Okay, now a couple is looking at you. Even worse. Just make sure you move, okay? Don't be stiff. I feel like safe scamming is cheating, but I want to see this go well. I don't want to just F this up for guard. I don't want to make a fool on my character again. Look, so, okay, I'm gonna sing karaoke. Okay, I'm probably gonna safe scum. I can see that. Steps away from the stage, ready for your performance. Uh, it's drama. Freaking drama. Okay, we're safe scumming because I want to see this work. We're only gonna attempt it once, though. So we're not gonna do some massive safe scumming. Not massive safe scumming, but I want to see this work. Uh, we should put away the flashlight because it just feels wrong. And the boombox. Because it just feels wrong. Okay, let's go for drama. This this is not a great outfit. Ugh. Let's see, this does not give drama. This does not give drama. Uh, let's. Do we have a shirt that gives drama? That would be nice. I keep thinking this is a bag. Yeah, I uh, I'm prepping for a karaoke, and unfortunately, that shirt, that coat gives uh, drama, which is what we need. Oh, this is disgusting. Can I just? I'm just gonna put on a different shirt, just in the meantime. Uh, is this? I really need new shirts. Like this just sucks. Okay, let's see. I forgot which one I looked at. Da 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 da. Minus drama. You know, I actually started a little late because I didn't realize I actually hit record instead of go live. So that sucked. Okay, surely I don't need to smoke cigarettes to make my performance better. Got a little bout of drama. Okay, since we safe scummed once, just once. The stage we haven't tried it yet. We don't know what the failure is like. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? If we do this, Let it gives us a. should turn on the karaoke carousel. It gives us a minus two. Because for some reason, doing this makes us too close to the mic. Even though that should give us a plus one because we know to back away from the mic. And two, we don't know where to put our hands. Dumb. Look around the room first. The bar is full. Of Just make sure you move. Okay. Don't be stiff. There are some dance moves. Okay, we're gonna try this once. If this fails, we're not gonna retry. The air is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. Okay, here we go. Kim, you should stand off to the side. Uh, you look a little conspicuous right there. I would often go there To the tiny church there The smallest church in San San Though it once was larger How the real may rest there Down through the mist there Toward the Seven Sisters Toward those pale cliffs there I would often stay there In their tiny yard there I have 
been so glad here. Looking forward to the past here. But now, you are all alone. None of this matters. Now, none of this matters. At all. Well now, critical success. Woo. New skill point. <laughs> of course, it's the ancient reptilian brain singing. I was just like, wow, they use that voice. It makes me wonder if that's our character's voice. A lazy applause fills the room. You feel your hands shake as awareness of your body returns to you. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I feel like this is fitting. I just don't know how people react. <laughs> These options are great. You know, I'm just going to read them out. Thank you, Ancient Reptilian Brain. I want to dedicate the song to whoever wrote me that fucking letter. I still love you. Thank you very much, asshole. I'd like to dedicate the song to my partner, Kim Kitsuragi. I'd like to dedicate the song to Gart for letting me sing it. It's all shit, Gart. I'd like to dedicate the song to the RCM. Please don't fire me. I don't want to dedicate the song to anyone. I performed it for myself. You know, I should have read the first and second sentences option a little differently. Let's try that. <laughs> this one, I I feel like this is so fitting, but it gets a little personal. Let's go with this one. I'd like to dedicate the song to the RCM. Please don't fire me. The lieutenant doesn't say anything, but he smiles. Sadly. Good, good. Are we ready? I want to unplug the microphone now. <laughs> Last words. <laughs> Finger fest, <those. laughs> Nah. Thank you, Martinez. I, I, f I feel like this is a safer option, but... <laughs> Ah, smallest church in Saint-Saëns, right? <laughs> yeah, church is actually my past. Cool. Now, what can I do for you? Th that's all. Thanks, Gart. You're a bro, but only after I strong your arm you into being a bro. <laughs> Whew, okay, okay, okay. Gotta change out these god awful clothes. Put that on. Uh, put this on. Why do we have something missing here? Oh, it's the shirt. Oh, I could put on this polo shirt. Well, I'm not gonna put on the other outfit now to check it. Physical instrument, go! <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, what to do next? It's getting dark out. I, have I ever tried to right-click in this game before? This, this is the same thing as tab, except I can see stuff above my head. Uh, dead body, right. Let's see, for checks, there was something about, um, what was it, pain threshold. Ah, but it's already grayed out, okay. Ooh, let's talk to the cargo container door. With rhetoric. This is the way, right? 
Yes, yes it is. Wait, what does rhetoric need? Okay, rhetoric is intellect, thank goodness. I think intellect is a good one to have. I mean, they're all good to have, but... I, in particular, I like intellect because unlike the others, intellect does not get harmed by taking damage. That just kind of sucks. I suppose it's better to get the other ones high so you can still do stuff even when you've taken morale or HP damage, but it just kind of sucks. Okay, where's the container? Ah, there we go. And actually, um, assuming that that is indeed a white check, let's look for the rhetoric. Plus rhetoric. Uh, red. Red Doric. Red Doric. Wait. Oh, minus one Red Doric. Yeah. Nothing. Okay, just make sure we don't have any minuses here. It's gotta be annoying watching me do this. Every single time. Alright, Dora, what you got for me? You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. Okay. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. So we... Hmm, I thought the one more door applied to the other door. Out the boardwalk. Still 8%. Blair. Blair. You need plus 7 to even make a difference. Well, let's try it. And, as it's always been, it's impossible to open a container with the rhetoric. Maybe you're losing your mind. Of course not. There's an option. Therefore, my mind says it's possible. The rest of me? Well, it might be impossible, but my mind says it's possible. Okay, uh, can we fast travel from here, actually? I uh, cannot fast travel from here. Alright, uh, let's go. Go, 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 Police work is tough. Take breaks, talk to strangers, and something else. I don't know. I mean, I'm ta always talking to strangers. Always. I wonder if there's some point to using the the payphones instead of just using Kim's. Why can't I fast travel in AL? Come on. Do I have to be at the fast travel point? Which is in front of the Whirling, I believe. I wonder what whirling in rags means. Uh, it makes me think of a washing machine. Oh, now I can travel. Uh, there was something to check out there, and then I'm gonna go to sleeping game, I guess. Unless there was something else I forgot to do. Is there something else I forgot to do? Find the murder weapon. Ooh, add beauty to the wall. Okay, well, let's see if we can do that. Except, let's see, that use conceptualization, right? Where is conceptual? Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's try that actually. Assuming Kim Kim will let us, gonna be painting some graffiti. Come on, you can do it. Okay, uh, let's see. You know, I gotta remember, but I don't remember what uh, I actually need to do the check again. I... Like, w what number I have to hit for the threshold, I could... Get an idea, apparently, but not actually know what exactly it is. Uh, let's see... The map wall. Interfacing, challenging. Interfacing, okay. Do I need to change our shirt? Let's change our shirt. Is there anything else that gives interfacing? It's got to be just gloves, right? Oh, the interfacing seems to be knowledge of the machinery as well. Not just your hands, despite that only a hand stuff seems to give it. So far! 
to do to do. Uh, yeah, I thought it was conceptualization actually, but interfacing. I mean, all right, I'll take it. Paintbrush. Oh wait. Check. Heavy fuel oil. Uh, Check. Now the only thing left to do is paint the wall. I mixed it up. This is conceptualization. This isn't a map, so why am I thinking this is the map wall? The paintbrush in your hand is like a loaded revolver. What will it be, Desperado? Quite a few things come to mind. <laughs> this is the only option that's not just words. If it's a 3.5k year old pictogram human being, is it just a stick figure? Hmm. Uh, pictograms back then weren't very impressive. Let's do it. What shadows lie there beneath the bright gleam? Let pose. You've spoken. The wall will now silently repeat the message for a decade or so until the sea air degrades the paint, adding another layer of detritus to the city. Very poetic. Real poetry. Should we return to our murder investigation? I hear there's a really bad one we are supposed to solve. Why does art inspire you so much? <laughs> It does, yes, but what is art? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. This kind of nice definition for art. In short, art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion and agency intertwined maybe i should have just draw a pictogram i feel like people will be thinking about this phrase and then eventually it would just start annoying some people seeing it every time they pass by it have you looked in the mirror like, say on the way to a work or something you have the exact features of a savage art critic with that beard and those clothes disheveled and prophetic perhaps you should try to critique architecture too i guess i have been feeling critical lately yes you seek substance no vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. <sighs> okay, I guess I have the thought. I wonder if there's any bad thing to having the thought. Okay, 50% art critics was needed to free me from rote repetition, so be it. Actually, let's see what uh, conceptualization says this. Wait, don't I have to be 100% cop to get the case finished and all that? Quit being so indecisive. What are you going for here? Some kind of indecisive and camp aesthetic now? Strike a bold shape here. Go art or go home. You know what? You're going to put it like that. I'm just going to go home. No, we cannot risk another quapo and diversion. This one, go away. Bravo. Continue. Then, the mediocre and vulgar epigones of the world. So what if everything is incomprehensibly shit and you can see it? Take no responsibility. I'm not doing it because you're trying to <laughs> you're trying to push me into it. This was a good call. That guy probably thinks forensics is autism too. You know, I, I happen to like the kind of forensics that we do here at Visual Calculus. Okay, we're done with that. I kind of want to talk to the artiste. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Uh, let's see. Keep looking at what you're looking at. Desperately hatred, disgust. The woman on the. That is on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Enjoys? On a first name basis with her. Well, oh, the negative. Have you got a crush on her? Aching for an opportunity to defend her honor. I asked why. You're asking my question to a question that doesn't tell me anything. 
Except that you apparently really, really do not like her, which I already knew. <laughs> what are you doing so long? You I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for. You don't know what you're right? We rarely. Start. She wants it to be something true, and total. Uh, I already yeah. got the opinion. I don't have an opinion. I lied. Lying is cool, I guess. No, it is not. It is not. Okay, I'm out. Let's... It's kind of annoying that you can't just fast travel anywhere outdoors. Like, it's not like I had to go through a building to get here, either. Big one open area. It's not like I'm standing in, like, a... A little section that connects between apartment doors and the rest of the apartment building. For some reason. Why is there a dot on there? I'm a little concerned. Was there was there always one? Get the flashlight out, we're running around night. Is it locked now? Yep, time to put the kids to sleep. Of course it is. What's that? A drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street. Before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is grey already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. Four. 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. Shivers. The whispers of the city, seems like. What about the bus stop? Number 312D. Young girls used to come here huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. Go the road. Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. Hmm. There's one bump on the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. Are we talking about this road, or like the road like way over there by where the jam is? Anyway, dead dog you say. Tragedy comes from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. Alright, that's enough. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. The boom barrier, RCM vehicle. Is there? Is it because I ran up to this edge right here, thinking that there was further to go? Is that where I'm seeing it? Or is there a detective I'm supposed to talk to somewhere? Click on that, right, right. Huh? Have I been here? I'm not sure I have. Actually, I might have. Oh, hang on. We're here. We could do this. No, 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 no. This is the wall that the other dude was looking at. No, this down here is the place I've been before. It's where the wall full of bullet holes is. I want to say I need visual calculus for it. And I want to say it was a very, very difficult check. Ah, yes. Here we go. Can't get further down that way, huh? Okay, let's try going for the visual calculus. We should have a few tools for that. Got some visual calc. Nope, not that one. Do we only have one thing for visual calculus? 
Oh, visual calc is pretty cool. Aha. See, we don't have any minus visual calc, right? We're gonna be doing this so much this episode. <laughs> oh boy. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall. Whoa! Reaching from one corner to the other. We know about fell electrical, we know about the revolution, bullet holes in the backyard, bullet holes in the plaza. A row of ghostly shades Whoa. stand facing the wall. There are many of them, a dozen at least. The heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet. No sound. No movement. And then they get shot. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles primed. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. Droplets of rain fall on the wooden planks. The surrounding sand dunes. The clouds block out any rays of light. Visual calculus makes the best thumbnail images. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. Aside from the bullet holes, you mean? What is this? The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. Hmm. Yeah, I hear about a firing squad. It's a bunch of people shooting, but only one person has the a bullet. The rest of them have blanks. They all fire at the same time. That way it... It potentially eases some of the guilt, I guess. Because, apparently, as horrible as people are in the world, most people don't want to think that they're there just to kill people, even if the people are said to have deserved it. Alright. Look at the people against the wall. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes. Ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting. A common practice for executions in some nations. As demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. Mm, I guess that's so that doesn't make as prominent of a slump. Because they don't just slump, they just fall over. You just see bodies drop. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Yeah. Ordinary people. Familiar, each and every one of them. Who were they? Leeches, fleas, and thieves. All the freeloader scum living off the hard work of others. Such is your belief. <laughs> it's amazing. I thought this was just a, a bunch of civilians getting killed over and over and over here at this wall. Just, just max ex ex executions. It's amazing how a single sentence could... Probably change my opinion. I know some people have to steal to live, but uh, I'm also convinced that a lot of people who commit crimes do it simply through blatant disregard for other people. And I guess I wouldn't feel sorry about those people getting off. Killing's not a good thing. It's not. But there's a lot of people who do harm even without doing physical harm. Look at the line of soldiers. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but from which one? Look at the person on the, standing on the side. Is that a sword they have? A baton? The commandant. The one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Yeah, I guess you're doing mass executions with only seven people, like... Yeah, I... Uh, you know, having seven people against one person, only having one person have the actual bullet, makes more sense. And assuming that they all fire at the same time, 
But you have a whole bunch of people. Like I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven people. You need at least seven rounds. And we're using automatic weapons. Blech. Kim, who's who in this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here. Lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. Remember what Trent Heidelstam said about Feld? What was the Feld personnel when their assets were being seized by the revolutionaries? Another likely scenario. He nods. Or maybe. You mentioned coalition forces. Could it have been them against the wall? Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. Hmm. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant, the superior giving the orders. All right, we'll go a for now. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. Hooey. Auto saving, huh? Cool. There's nothing to grab here, and I don't know where to check for traces of bullets. Did I miss a crucial location? Was that that bunker looking thing that I couldn't get inside? Or does it not get crossed off because you can't find a negative? If you're looking for traces of bullets and there are no bullet traces, then you can't remark it off as having been found or not, right? I mean, well, you're marking it off as not having been found, but you can't say that doesn't exist if you haven't found anything. Hello, I'm Gary. How do you do, officer? Yellow man. I mean, officer. Oh, God. Oh, friggin' God, are you serious? The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. Shane's laser and eyes. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Nah, lover of the great outdoors. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. No, it's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacall. You're the only one who pronounced it Revacall, but then again, I've been saying all the French terms wrong, so... Ah, someone has to stay strong, and uber-fascist, apparently. His gaze shifts to the pile of soggy logs at his feet. He pronounces Revacall with a hard K, unlike other people. Uh-huh, like he's new here, maybe? Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. You said Revacall. I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. Nah, it's all he right. winks at you, trying to relay some hidden message. Inviting you to mispronounce it too, perhaps. It's odd. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. Is this your mug? Uh, Kim's not gonna be happy about this, is he? My mug? Why would you think that? His eyes widen at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before, all right? <laughs> you said yellow man. That's not something many people go around saying. Really? I hear it all the time. All in jest, of course. No offense meant to anyone. Still seems suspicious. Or, uh, hmm. I wonder, like, this one is, like, double talk, like, here. Uh, like, I, I don't know if saying, all right, I believe you, means he's just going to get emboldened, and if it means our character is just going to brush it off and thus not pay close attention, or if we're pointing out that he knows that it's a crime to lie to an officer. Especially because they emphasize the word crime. I believe you. You look like the kind of man who knows it's a crime to lie to an officer. Okay, okay. I admit it. 
I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. God dang, the cast of this game, they have they do such a good job of annoying characters, doing annoying character voices. You're not going to find me, are you? Nah, Gary, just want information. Yeah, I mean, it would be corruption if I took it for myself. Whew. Thank you. You won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. How'd you get into the trash container? I know a guy who works with the trash collection services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Chimians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. Yeah, I'm more concerned about the racism and how you think that someone has to stay strong for River Call. <laughs> You're gonna commit crimes but look down on everyone who smokes. Got it. Or not smokes, drinks. Drinks and gets high. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Gary, did you put the clothes on murder victim? The man who was hanged behind the whirling rags into that trash can? Come on. Do we have to do something that direct? I... I mean... If you're short, Medoro, make sure that you got two mirrors to check for any spots you missed. You want to have a bigger mirror behind you and a small mirror in front of you, like something that you can move around. It's easier than having the big mirror in front of you. Yeah, I've seen some people do that. They would have the handheld mirror, and they'd be trying to angle it behind their heads. It's pretty awkward. Okay. Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. Do. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Okay, then what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Changes. Excuse me, changes his mind mid-sentence. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes, too. Right. It was just civic duty. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads, against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before. But What's that? where? What's that sound? What sound? That clinking I just heard when you moved. Really? He fans his arm out slow, and this time his motions are soundless. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Search this bastard! What sound? Don't mess with me, I know what you're talking about. I haven't the slightest. There's lots of weird you stuff. You wouldn't happen to know anything about the, the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I, I mean, yes, of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. There's something going on here. You should observe it more closely after this topic is concluded. Let's move on for now. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. Hmm, clinking around. Composure. Can we get our composure any higher? Do you know anything about the man hanged there? I told you everything I know, sir. I'm truly sorry for the mug, but I have nothing to do with that. 
He's just not controllable in his clothes. He's not feeling too comfortable in his own skin. Odd, I'd say. Are you a cryptozoologist too? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. Ah, that's why you're not a cryptozoologist. You're just a crypto-fascist. There probably is a follow-up to this, but you can't think of any. Doesn't matter. Waste of time anyway. You were Gotta keep moving. Surprise to see my colleague, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Seol. I meant no offense, truly. Aha. Uh -huh. Seol. Um... I mean, it's the spelling is a bit off, but Korean. But Kitsuragi um does look like a Japanese name. Eh, <sighs> not gonna think too hard about it. Do you remember how when we met Measure Head and I said the next races will be a really good one? Yes. Well, this is that racist. <laughs> he gestures towards Gary as though we're, we're presenting a work of art. You know, actually, I do like this guy better than the Lord Driver. Yes, our lucky racist. Hey, man. All I meant was there are not many Seolites around here. I'm just stating a fact. The lieutenant is a native of River Rivershall, but he has an accent. He has a strong accent. Do you have a problem with Seolites? <laughs> yeah, just keep making him uncomfortable. No. No problem at all. Can check the composure gear. Yes, we're gonna go through all our clothes again. This is why you don't bring your entire wardrobe around with you. Except if I didn't do this, then I wouldn't have all the buffs available to me, huh? So I guess this is why you do bring your entire wardrobe around. Because everyone's just gonna sit there and wait for you. Empathy? We don't need empathy with this guy. Is there anything that would. Mess up my composure. No, let's get rid of that. We need drama to figure out if he's lying. Lying! Composure is. I can't find it. Oh, there. There! Okay, our composure is actually pretty good. Always a pleasure. I mean, officers. <laughs> 72 percent let's go why is he shifting around like that analyze gary's composure that shirt looks very uncomfortable on him look at the buttons barely keeping that thing together as if something is ready to rip out from underneath something worn underneath it body armor perhaps yes like a piece of ceramic armor. How can you possibly example, fit a coat on that? One makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. <laughs> I see you're a connoisseur of high-quality combat gear. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... He unbuttons a shirt. If, when he cuts off mad, a mid sentence like that, it makes it feel like he's gonna charge us or something like that. In which case, we just have to pop him in the head. I was ashamed of what I did, and I didn't want you to know. Mm hmm. So you were around with you? I guess I would have snooped around the rooms if I had the option to. You see gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates covers his gaunt torso. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. Gary! What's going on? Later, Morale. I've got apologizing to do. <laughs> no. You've got explaining to do. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. How did you get to the and biggest piece? scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling, so I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and... I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, 
He's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. <sighs> so, wait, they put the clothes and armor back on the guy? After he died? And then hung him up? Yeah. Only the caress was left. So I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I... I wouldn't have... Fuck. I kind of want to talk to the scab leader with as much of the armor on as I can get. Unfortunately, we let the shoes go away, so that's... Yeah, unfortunate. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tiny tap now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. Sealite officers commanded the Suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... Shakes his head. They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. Give me the armor now. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. Yeah. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Come on. Ceramic armor isn't that light. I've held sappy plates in real life. <laughs> like a bag of cotton. Yeah, right. <sighs> Unless they're stupidly advanced in this setting in certain categories. And stupidly primitive in others. Do you know who killed the hangman? I always thought it was the Union. Some Union hard asses. Lynched him because of the strike. But almost everyone in town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. This is all he knows. Why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you. But... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? Eh, just a little bit. I'll explain later. <laughs> Done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. Looks around, relieves some burden. His mouth's still quivering. <laughs> and we don't find him. We don't find him. Oh boy. Volition. Wow, we didn't fit under our coat. Dang. Does Nicholas look any fatter? Nope. Dang, it actually gives us morale. That's that's crazy. If we need extra morale, we can slap this on. Let's just put on the white tank uh, for now, even though it looks ugly as sin. Okay, that's that's cool. Uh, let's see. I was just checking to see if this was a different description. Thicker skin, bar confidence, mania of invulnerability. Mania. Mania? <laughs> I pronounce it mania. <laughs> This vitri vitreous? Vitreous enamel caress fits snugly and redistributes kinetic energy across its countless white plates. Amazingly, it fits under your coat. It also makes pretty porcelain sounds when shaken. Da, isn't that nice? Wait, there's there's a door there. Did we go in there before? Or was it locked? Was it sealed off? Does it lead to uh, something we can't reach? But our character's running towards it. Interesting. I'm gonna try and manually walk into it. Nope, it's not working. It's not working, chat, but there's something there. Unless, can we rip off this uh, mural? Can't seem to climb the ladder. Wait, there's a gap there, but we couldn't get in there, right? Right? You see, a, what a slogan used to intertwine. Looks like tomorrow never came. Okay, so stuff highlighted in white generally don't have anything. I don't know if they ever do. 
Come on, officers, you can run faster than that. This is the boardwalk again. Where is the Ferris wheel? Have we seen it? I told myself I was going to be wasting too much time, right? It's... It's, it's, it's been a while. An empty cigarette pack. Okay, you know what? Let's make some more progress. I, we, I guess we got some side quests done. We made some progress. I want to get back to my boat and sleep now. I mean, yes, my boat. It was a boat. My ing. My excellent low price motel room. Oh, wait. I totally forgot there is somewhere to stay. And I never checked this out. There's somewhere to stay other than the boat. I got the room from this nice lady. What are these doing in the fish? What? What's doing in the fish? There's loot. Huh, I haven't seen the RCM around for ages. Is that a guy? I don't even know. Money. What is that? The, pl the planks creak beneath your weight. Your weight. Wow, I'm mixing up all my words. I said, <laughs> I combined planks and creek, so the pleaks. <laughs> and then I don't know why I said weight as right. Okay. Is there nothing else we can do with that? What are these doing the fish? What's what doing the fish? Oh, shoes! Thought that you guys forgot this place even exists. I got perception shoes. Alright, let's put on these shoes. I like these shoes better. Hi, officer. Lillian. Oh, this is the mom, isn't it? Question mark? No, the other, the older lace is something like Lillian. A woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword and a scabbard hangs from her hip. Factory balanced. Baker light and stainless steel. Anything I can help you with? Why do you have a sword? And fishing hooks from your ear? Seems like it could get caught on stuff and hurt. Depends, where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Ilicibla. Not Ilicibo? Ilicibla? Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. Questions. First, what's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Netpicker. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. Mm -hmm. Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. That's actually my third one, because I asked why. Nice sword. Does it come with the story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of story. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. Hold on, do you know how to use it? Not really. I know some basic moves, and I know it sure as hell beats a knife when you're in a tough spot. But not when you're in a tight spot. Yes, but you generally don't want to be in tight spots anyway, right? It is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Yeah, admittedly, a shovel would be uh, pretty... I mean, an axe would be pretty intimidating. A shovel, not so much, even though it does have a blade on it and some weight. What are your intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. I'm sorry? Why don't more women arm themselves so effective? What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> the truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. Behold, points with expression in your face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you like it? Sure. It looks as if you could face down any horror in the world with that same unchanging grin. It's like a shield. <laughs> The traces of her laughter are still there, 
in her eyes faded fast. Can I buy that sword? No, I'm afraid not. Tempting to confiscate the blade I used to keep these animals in check. You put me in an early grave. That's true, huh? Where are the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. <laughs> Where's your husband now? Gone. Gone? Coward! I would never leave any- <laughs> Dude, disappeared. Sounds like a missing persons case. He's probably dead. It absolutely does not. We are not going to look for him. <laughs> no, no. There's nothing to find. He's dead. Lost to the waves. That's bad. What happened? Who knows? Maybe he fell over. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day, the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, Know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. There's some terrible things to say. I kind of appreciate about that about this game. The fact that they let you say the absolute worst things. You should have thrown yourself in the waves after him. Nod sagely. What? <laughs> it's healthy to let go and move on. Gotta keep the wheel spinning. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. Glance at the village where two little kids are playing on what look like rocks. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, better, drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. No. 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 Kim's present makes it awkward. Of course it does. Suggestion. Difficulty? Heroic. 15. She needs to go on a date with another drunk. Badly. No! <laughs> God, no. Kim disapproves, that means it's probably a bad idea. Is that your boat? Sure is. The sun, I call her. Coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help? Let's see. Who are you looking for? Uh, I'd like to ask something else. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to have to go back to, to talk to her uh, once I find out more stuff about the do in the library card. And I, I was hoping I could ask about Ruby, but I guess not. What do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now, I'm tarring a little skiff. Uh, the hooks hanging off her ears scare the crap out of me. I'd totally, like, stab myself in the chin with those or... And they're probably barbed too, huh? What else? I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insular Indian cuisine. <laughs> nice. But isn't that enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. You probably seen my car, didn't you? Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. I'm not hitting on her. Interesting. What have you found? Wood. Pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. Yeah. A mine washed ashore once. Yeah. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. Did you happen to find a gun? All right. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. Some of these are weird enough. I need to know about this human body. Yeah, you're a cop. And mine. The RCM could use a mine. Where is it? Drugs? I need info on this. Major narc points at yourself. No, I want to look into the drugs because we have someone doing drug trafficking. This place looks bad. Why don't you leave? Hmm, the mine. I'm very curious about that. Human bodies as well. We're a cop, but I mean, we've already dealt with at least two dead bodies. Eh. And go where? The fish are plentiful here, and we get enough orders to get by. It's not great, but it's something. Fair enough. 
just somewhere away from all the sadness. People imagine picking up and finding something better is an easy solution. But how is that supposed to work when all your time and energy goes to staying alive? You have almost nothing to set aside to actually fight your way out. Yeah, that's a good point. Hordes of wild, homeless people roam in the lands. Nomads scattered across an endless plain in a dystopian world where tear is the only valid currency and people eat each other to stay alive. Are we... we talking about fun? <laughs> I don't mean to complain about my pauper life. We are warm and fed here and... I don't know. There's just something about this shithole. Be seeing you. I like talking to her. It's great that this game doesn't only have nasty people. Right, uh, I'm gonna in to try... I'm gonna waste time once more. Just once more. New day. Or do I have to wait until morning? Inside, you see a set of steering levers. Give me the radio. radio microphone. This is Precinct 57. How may I... Do you find more about the owner? Not yet. But I was able to continue. Oh, tomorrow morning, got it. Okay. In the cabin, you see a. Get me to my room. It's probably nice and cozy in there. It's getting cold. This late in the night. Time to call it a day. Good night, Kim. See you later. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Enter the shack. And there's nothing else I need to do without Kim, right? Let's check real fast. Dang, we actually made a lot of progress. Yeah, we're about to take care of everything from Monday. Um, the only thing we have left on Tuesday is find the murder weapon. Uh, lots of stuff from Wednesday. Which I believe is to... Well, technically yesterday. Uh, midnight just passed. Most of these, like, come on, let's see. One, two, three, four are all about that... Uh, about the church. Uh, five, you count the, the figurines, but we need to find her in person, question mark. All this except make Titus give up Ruby's location. Oh, and technically determine the shot. Oh, we're pretty much here. I wonder how to get to the other locations, though. I have no idea how. We've been exploring this because all this opened up, but it's like... What is this? Do I need to find a boat? Do I need to find a ship to get over there? Lots of CEOs here, including Joyce's ship, which apparently shows up on the map. I have no idea where the Ferris wheel is, though. And I don't know what this thing is. Kind of looks like the Einho Keep and um, Treasure Cold Steel 3. The big train facility with, like, shifting rooms. You never actually see the room shift, though. That's just their explanation for why things change every time you go in there. Whoa. Core Jeff jacket. Fancy jacket? Uh, let's see what it says. This swanky checkered jacket flatters your form in a way that makes you feel the fun kind of serious. It has really nice roomy pockets too. I appreciate big pockets. Good old fashioned calf high cavalry boots. Mount that horse and ride into the night. The heel comes in handy too. It definitely makes you some good five centimeters taller, but it could be that's also making you sharper. More perceptive to your surroundings now that you gained a new perspective. A view from above, that's two inch heels. Is there anything in the rest of the soles, or are you wearing high heels? I mean, I know two inches is fairly short for high heels, but still. Actually, do I know that? I think high heels, and I think three inches. I know they can get more ridiculous. They could probably also get more subdued. Especially if you. If you're already tall, you don't want to look too much taller. Anyway, um... Let's go sleep, I guess. Wait, what's this? On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Is she having the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red. Hair unkempt. Wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. 
The stash is gigantic. A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. Surely we don't need to check for stats. Time to shave. Get these mutton chops off. Like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. This looks like one of those like shaving razors with at least one blade, sometimes as many as three, and I'm not sure if that's good enough for a beard this big. I feel like you just want like I thought a, sh a straight razor was one of those um, like folding ones with the tiny handle and the blade attached to the the second part. You know, like and just kind of like an L shape, and you just kind of sc scrape it off. <laughs> Buying a hand mirror, huh? I see, I see. Man, you should have just stopped by my place yesterday. I mean, we got hand mirrors around, even we didn't want to like cut off the hair. And I'm still annoyed that I managed to like miss like a strand of hair on our buddy's head. I kept look looking at his hair, wondering if like I did it more poorly than usual this time. I second guessing myself a bit. Part of his hair, I was like, hmm, is that just, like, bed hair look, or did I... Hmm. I was really second-guessing myself there. Well, um, how do you feel about stopping by my place? We've known each other for a long time. And I could definitely at least trim it up, like, here and there. Yeah, once every two months is pretty common for people. That's roughly an inch of hair. Yeah, and you could just stop by once in a while. You just don't feel like hey, coming to me every time. And plus, we don't even know, if, though, if you actually like like what I do with your hair. But, you know, we can give it a look at least. I do tend to take a while, though. Tend to just, like, talk nonstop. Anyway, let's continue with this. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender. The air brushing against it, chilly. <laughs> you know, I kind of wish that he had the expression on his face. Like, he just looks so sad now. The mustache was ridiculous. Or, mustache? The sideburns were absolutely ridiculous. But now he just looks sad. He just looks so sad. I feel like he needs the expression again. So, maybe at each place that we stay, we could change his appearance. We got rid of the expression at the the whirling. We got rid of the beard here. I wonder what we can get from sleeping under the boat. Yeah, he looks... Uh, this, this is not a great look for him. Feel your clean-shaven cheeks. They feel so smooth. Surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you. As if you just came from a cold bath. Was shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, you look a little younger, maybe. You almost look like a professional. Ah, uh, we should have kept the expression. This, this just looks too sad, too depressing. Too sad. I'm depressed. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it, such as it is. The bed is comforting. Go to sleep. The... Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. You know, 
this is excellent voice for the part of your head known as that ancient reptilian brain, but I still question the decision to have this voice singing the sad song. Recorded in you forever on Ferrate. Spinning, spinning. Tell me, am I dreaming? No. Your spinning tapes are the discotheque. The great unceasing disco of the mind. The flash. The bang. The endless learning experience. Spinning in eternity. On and on it goes. For untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. Behold. There are millions of them down there. The first time. The last time. The smoke in her mouth. The plotted flowers. The faces turning, changing. What is it? It's the world, Harry boy. And you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. Oh. You can never forget this shit. Don't know what to say here. The rain, the snow, I don't want to. It's beautiful. Beautiful. It's stuck on loop, whirling, spitting out words and images. Well, he's got images. You guys are just whirling and spitting out words. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Uh, I guess I am collecting postcards, but didn't I sell them? Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. That's right. I am an ancient of the world. An agent. I said ancient. Ah, I should have stick to my normal voice. And none of these fits with what the ancient reptilian brain is saying, so I shouldn't try to even slightly imitate his voice. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. I already have, bucko. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? For the greater good. Oh, hey, empathy! Welcome. <laughs> Solving your little crossword puzzles. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. We're making progress. Measured, steady progress. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, our Harry. He still doesn't see that it's the world changing around him. Well, the world's not letting me sleep, so yeah. He's got no idea what he's in for. Eh, uh, I feel the pillow under my cheek. Beep, beep, beep! The alarm is ringing, Harry! The disco circus goes on and on! You barely slept three hours last night! What? No, we slept plenty. Oh, we Do were laying in bed for plenty. The picture puzzle. Put it all together. Solve the world. One conversation at a time.
Sleep is kind of dreadful. But we got more out, despite whatever that red stuff was. What we got here? Good. You're up. Listen, there's something that's been bothering you for a few days now. What, the door? It's a suspicion, or a feeling, really, that things are not quite in hand around here. An earth-shattering deduction from your psyche. What will those guys come up with next? Uh-huh. Every day, things seem to spin more and more wildly, out of control. The center isn't holding. And despite your efforts to moderate and contain these energies, things only seem to be getting worse. Wait, I thought things were going very well? Oh, sure. You've been making progress on your case, interviewing people, solving side tasks. But? But who's focusing on the big questions. This doesn't really sound like my job. Open your eyes. Stop getting distracted by details. It's time you started focusing on what really matters. Uh-huh. And that is? You've got to find out who bears la responsabilité. Hey, what? I, mean, I kind of figured Everett was behind everything. I mean, Everett? Everard? No, Everard was behind a lot of stuff, but we can't find quite anything on the actual killer. So far, my biggest suspect is Ruby, who I haven't even met yet. Hmm. What exactly is La Responsibilité? The most awesome, terrible thing. Stop being around the bush. It is human nature to crave La Responsibilité and to deny it. That's why it must be distributed across many different organizations, agencies, offices, and portfolios. Look, I have no idea what you're talking about, so just give it to me. I'll accept responsibility. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't some kind of dictatorship. You can't simply seize la responsibility for yourself. It must be given by a legitimate authority. Like a committee. Uh-huh. And who should sit on this committee? Only the most even-keeled minds in Martinez. Your half-brother, the lieutenant, is a natural place to start. What? Together, you'll be able to discover who has la responsibilité in Rivershaw. And, if necessary, you'll have the wisdom and expertise to assign it among yourselves. I don't know what you're talking about. This seems like a drag. Uh, my half-brother. Jeez. What, what happens when I sign the responsibility? Because I have no idea what you guys are talking about right now. Most likely, your findings will be collected in a report, which will be carefully reviewed by your superiors. Uh... Once they've reviewed it, those same superiors will produce a set of recommendations to be taken up at the next meeting of the Standing Committee. I have no idea what empathy is talking about. Rest assured, no matter what happens, it will be done through the proper channels. This sounds like a, such a drag. Solve the case and proceed with people getting murdered again and lying and cheating and stealing and you know, all that stuff. Uh, it's a game, let's, let's accept the task. Good luck. Your report is eagerly anticipated. Dang me. What have I got myself in? You're up. It's a spin earth every day. Things seem to. Not my problem. <laughs> it's still here or something. Take on the responsibility. First, we have to form a committee to decide whose job it is. What? <laughs> Seems like a pain. Seems like an absolute pain. You're hiding in that little shed area. Yes? Kim, we need to talk about... Responsibility. 
I, but before that, I shaved. Yes. Uh, um, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps... Uh, I knew I should shave. I knew I just did it. What an idiot. No, no. It's okay, I guess. I may have preferred the mutton chops. They sort of seem to cover the... Either way, good and ill. <laughs> you were saying? <laughs> the sadness, the the huge creases. <laughs> Man, it's the creases that make him look bad more than anything else, I think. Ah, I'm glad to hear it, detective. I was wondering when we'd get to this very subject. What do you mean? If you ask me, it's high time for you to put the bottle away. Sober up, get back to basics. That would be my advice. And I hope we don't even need to discuss the street drugs you've been abusing. At least let me have my cigarettes, Kim. I only smoke them for the bonuses. The lieutenant's quizzical expression gradually deepens into a frown. So, what are we talking about then? Talking about the responsibility, you know, the kind that gives a sign. What? I don't know what I'm talking about! Why are you pronouncing it like that gentleman from the Institute of Pi Stability? Brain my, uh, blame my brain and empathy. Because I'm not considering a part of my brain anymore. I, I'm kidding. You know what? Forget it. What specifically are you trying to assign responsibility for? For this whole situation. Ah. Uh. No, I understand. He does not understand. Next, I suppose you're going to tell me you need to form a committee to assign this responsibility. How did you know? Simple. Because moral intern types love to form committees. In any event, I am just a humble law official. I may work under the moral intern's umbrella, but I'm certainly not qualified to serve on any committee. You know who might be, though? That Mr. Villedroin. The gentleman you met in the young man's apartment. If I were trying to get in touch with the coalition, I would start by seeking him out. But first, you might need to speak with his young companion. Ah. Uh. Now, was there anything else? No, we're good. I guess I am putting my flashlight away now. Okay, uh... Oh, it's too early to call people up. Uh, oh, we could uh, go to the church. And what are we doing there? Medium suggestion. No, we're not going to ask her out. Why is suggestion so low? Suggestion is so low. Right, let's check them out my thoughts. I haven't looked at them in a while. Oh, I don't have a new thought. Okay. Do do uh, The Wompty Dompy Dom Center. It's wait, did I read this before? I don't think I read this before. It's Wednesday evening, and something heinously exciting is underway. People have gathered beneath the billowing roof of an oddly shaped trophy building, sipping wine and exchanging opinions. Twenty-nine-year-old Wonder Twins Guy and Keith Juice are the stars of the show, with their bomber jackets and white sneakers, head curators of this art exhibition. It's the Wompty Dom de Domius event of the year, and all the cool kids have RSVP. Where are you, if you are not there? I don't know what to make of this. One more door. I kind of want to grab this. There must be a way. Data brush general. Why do we have to know that? Some kind of conscience. I don't remember if I read that. I, I probably did read this. Logic still seems unlikely. Rock, rock and roll. 
something. Superstar. Superstar cop, maybe. Hmm. Oh, I didn't actually click on Ace's high. There we go. You know, I'm all curious about this. I'm gonna put a point into it. Let's go. Have we unlocked anything extra by getting plus two or four? Yes. I want to talk about. I want to talk about you. What about me? Tell me a secret about yourself. No. <laughs> okay. Ask again. Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. It's like you're locked down. What's happening to me? Something the matter, detective? This guy's got authority off the charts. With just the flick of his eyebrow, he's able to make you his thrall. Uh, Robo Head, or Robot Head, uh, I'm going to now ban you. You seem like bot behavior. Unfortunately, I'm really slow doing this because it's actually been a while since the bots have come around and caused trouble for me. Lock? Cool. Oh, there's the ban button. There we go, banned. I guess I don't have to block them. Do, do I block them? I'm gonna ban them. Okay. What can I do about this? Nothing. You better hope he doesn't abuse his authority. <laughs> There's a lot of it. Uh, 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 Slightly scared for help. If the lieutenant were an evil man, who knows what sort of havoc he could wreak. Well, thankfully, he's been putting up with all my crap, so... Fortunately, he is a committed officer of the RCM. He'll only use his powers for the good of the investigation. No police corruption? Not from this guy, apparently. The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you seem to regain control of yourself. That's go. all for now. That's good. Okay, uh, let's get our suggestion back up and then go back to the church and yada yada. Do I even have anything for suggestion? Yes. The naval coat. That's it. The naval coat. Make sure our hands are free. That's it. None of this new stuff gives anything, right? Right. Teleport to church. Go inside church. Talk to the lady. Convince her to let people set up a club here with music that she really does not like, which might get in the way of her work. I guess it's not actually work. I don't think yes. she's getting paid for what this. Is it? Convince her to cooperate with the ravers. 83%. Let's go. Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. Listen, about your research, you mentioned earlier that's not going very well. Maybe I can help with something? You know, I don't know if I make measuring it any easier, but she's trying to find that hole in the world, right? That point of silence? So they make lots of noise here. What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. But if I could help you finish the project, then you wouldn't have to live in a church next to the Boom Boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it. A glossy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's offside copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. Uh, by your workplace? Do you mean the studio fortress accident in that office building on Plaza? How do we know this? Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Wait, bookstore lady? You mean Plaisance? That's her name, I believe. And where exactly is the off-copy? The off-site copy? There's this giant ice bear fridge in the building cellar. It's there. Excuse me? Ice bear fridge? <laughs> So is that a fridge shaped like a polar bear, or like, wh what are we talking about here? I don't have to fight Don't the fridge? Worry. You can't miss the bear. It's hideous. Uh-huh. What is an offside copy, and why do you need it? It's a backup of my former employer's project. The radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory. 
just like the one inside this radio computer. All right. She's making it extra simple for you. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Sure. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? Good question. Oh god, not this again. It is not on-site. It is in the basement. Perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. I, when I think on site, I mean like at the location. If you're, if it's in the basement of the same location, I'd still consider that on site. It might not be connected, but uh... basement sounds like it's technically still on site. Okay, I'm glad Redrick agrees with me. And no, taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. Um... <laughs> are you sure about this? There's some kind of anomaly. Just because there's... Uh, just because it shouldn't have gone haywire because it wasn't plugged in doesn't mean that something else couldn't have hit it while it was in the basement. Or maybe some kind of... Let's just say hypothetically an EMP that just swept through the whole building. We clear? She stares at you with pleading furious eyes. Pleading and furious? F it, I'll, I'll accept yes. it. She thinks for a moment, then reaches behind the radio computer and hands you what looks like an oversized pry bar. And here's my false note multi-tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the false note. And I'll probably get to keep it until I get the copy, right? The legendary Kvalsund multi-tool. This is Primar version 2.0 for professionals like you. How's this a multi-tool? Isn't it just a giant pry bar? What? What the heck is this? <laughs> oh god. This is a pry bar plus two, if you will. Built by Kvalsund and Havasa. The number of gadgets hidden within the frame of the gray and yellow multi-tool will stagger any technician. Oh, uh, well, all right then! All right, we gotta get out of the church to fast travel. I think Crabman will talk to me again. Nah, Crabman doesn't want anything to do with me. So you're doing random side quests, and then maybe we should proceed with the main quest, huh? Talk to Titus. After... We talk to the bookstore, folks. And let's equip the multi-tool. God, that's massive. What the frick is this? That's like a small jackhammer or something like that. Like, what the heck? I don't remember what she said was behind this door before. Maybe Hello we just left again, it alone. esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I was told, I was told there was a huge fridge in the basement cellar. Can you leave me there? A fridge? No, I don't know anything about a fridge. Aren't you interested in books? She nods at the bookshelves, fidgeting with her pendant. In a video game, that probably means something. In real life, I'm not quite sure. Could For still be whatever reason. Day. She's lying to you about the fridge. Seems like you have to find your own way to the cellar. What if I want to buy the book? Goodness, you were already doing good browsing the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go, go, get back there. The books await I'll you. I'll take another look. She then. smiles and nods. Should I buy a book, or should I just bust my way in? The curtains. Tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Open the curtains. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand is closed around her pendant. Her finger is nervously playing with the talisman. Parasite There's something there. Speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. Oh, do you pair of psychological? Responsible for the consequences. 
It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? I heard there's a fridge there that I need. Everybody suddenly needs something from there. Leave the curtains be. It's what it wants. This is about the curse. That's why you're afraid. I don't even remember what curse we're talking about. No, it's just a storeroom for the employees. I told you. Now, please step away from the curtains. I'm a freaking uh, police officer. Just let me take a quick look. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer and I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The curtains do seem... Frail, suddenly. Not robust enough to contain a slippery darkness. Eh, but I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. Oh, this is so weird. You do? My god, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Alright, I'll think about it for a while. Thank you. Let's just talk about this first, alright? There's no reason for you to venture into the unknown. Ma'am, I just tried to talk to you, so unless Talking you can negotiate good. better... Go see what she has to say. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust. <laughs> Next option is to rip them open, this time for real. Hello again, esteemed officer. Why are you I'm so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's Very on the other side. I already told you. It's just a store. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be... Drawn to the books. I ignored it for a long time, but I need to get down there. Hey, Reddits. She's so tense, it's a miracle she hasn't snapped in half yet. And yeah, well, some people are just slightly elastic. I don't know what I, why I said that or what that means. Okay, so currently in the story, I am, uh, I've been ignoring the main quest and trying to do a bunch of side quest stuff. Currently, I'm trying to, um, <laughs> I'm trying to get this church available to, for use by a bunch of would-be druggies who have now agreed just to build a dance club without the drugs. Problem? There's a lady in there doing some science stuff and she says that she needs me to go get her off-site copy that's technically on-site of some incomplete game in the basement of the bookstore and she gave me this massive pry bar which I don't even know what this thing is this huge orange thing here and as I try to go in there, the book the bookkeeper keeps freaking out like there's some kind of demon that's going to be released if I pull open the curtains. But she keeps insisting it's a storage room, so... <laughs> okay, let's start poking at it. If it's just a storage room, then why does it have a Seminese ward protecting it? It's just for decoration. She wavers under your gaze. Mouth press into a tight lip smile, but then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed, just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Uh huh. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? What have we ruined, and why are you talking to your pendant? Host of hosts, she prays. Guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How does this curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. I need Slaybar literal details, ma'am. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. Mm hmm. Uh, let's not bring up Annette. She's a little too harsh on her daughter as it is. Okay, I'm a little confused. What does that mean? Everyone knows that all the previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy. And their malicious spirits are still here. Feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. Bad business practices. You know, like... Leaving your daughter outside in the freezing cold to usher people in instead of letting her come inside and study. There's something wrong go with go this school. building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. 
I heard the union has squeezed out all the local businesses to fund their strike. How is your store still up and running? It must be these very spells and wards of protection that keep me safe from all the ill and wicked deeds. Yeah, there's no curse, it's the frigging union. Why didn't you just tell me right away it's the curse? It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, it's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. And uh, you're gonna beat around the bush? I, I, I feel like... I guess I don't know exactly how these void wraiths act, but like, I feel like if you're going to skirt on the issue, you're indirectly talking about it. Is that really worse than saying something quick and direct instead of just, you know, continuously dropping hints about them? <sighs> Am I really going through a side quest to solve a side quest to solve a side quest? Wow. Void wraiths. You have new words. What are you talking about? These are the kind of words I've been using for years, probably decades. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods at the strange cage like trinket on the The curtains. wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Uh, yeah, um, if there is a curse, typically it feels like the, the exorcists can't do a good job. Like, I, that that's in every setting, right? They go in, they're like, oh, we dealt with that, and no, they don't. Although in this case, they, they place a ward on it, so that's a little different, I guess. It's your pendant part of the wards as well. Oh, this? No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. Mm -hmm. Has it worked? I haven't noticed if it actually affected Harry's thought process. There are numerous all. spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Mm, I wonder this is part of the bad business practices and disappointing income statements. I mean, if all of it is being spent on... Spell expenses. Desert pygmy shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Uh-huh. Doesn't seem like the spell is working. There are no customers around except you. There are hardly any customers in the store. Do you think it's really working? Sir, I am well educated in the commercial and esoteric arts. I know what to do and what to avoid. Have you ever thought about a sale? Maybe this could learn some customers. Discount my wares? I can see, sir, that you don't value books very highly. <sighs> you know, from a certain perspective, she's the one who doesn't value books highly. Because knowledge is meant to be spread. Learning should be available to everyone. You want people to access the knowledge in these books? You find ways to get them interested in it. Other than, you know, wasting money on spells that apparently do not work. Besides, this would only tempt the phantoms of doom. They can sense the desperation, you know. Oh, you you were disappointing me. Would well, you like me to take the case? I could investigate to see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their sl My liege, you know what this case calls for? A para-detective. Helped Annette on a quest to find the offsite copy. Convince her to let you investigate the doomed commercial area. 97%. <laughs> Drama, do your thing. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. What if I don't want to lie? No! Look, I, I, I generally don't like lying, but everyone... Not everyone. Most of the people in this game have been so irritatingly uncooperative. Okay, maybe just half the characters. Maybe not most of them. Maybe just half the characters. Maybe a little less than half. I don't know. Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. 
Are you sure? Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I sense the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. I'm not sure I can trust your claims. Honestly, you look like a bit of a drinker. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but... The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. I admit I had my share of drinks, but only because the Spectre Realm is parapsychologically taxing. How do you know all this? Here we go. Ah, uh, this, well, this seems a little bleh, d bad. Your wards brought me here in the first place. The Seminese blood also runs through me. You're part Seminese. Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. <laughs> Normally, I would disprove of this kind of thing, but one, we are not trying to rip her off. Two, we need to get in there. And three, she has been absolutely frustrating, even without the whole curtain thing aside. And even with the curtain thing aside. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. I would feel really, really bad if there actually are phantoms out there and they are indiscriminately going to hit everyone. But we are not going to ask my partner because he is not going to <laughs> stick his foot in this. No problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The phantoms are no match for me. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Mm -hmm. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of course, the entity. I have sensed its presence. You have? The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? Chimney? The passage between heaven and hell? Of course. Yes, that chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Mm. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. <laughs> I suspect that she must be connected to the curse. So we're going to ask her? We don't assume that she's just the cause and try to exercise her or otherwise slay her? Well... Okay, whatever. Let's go. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Oh, wouldn't that be great if I just went in there to investigate the curse and I just vanished, never to be seen again? Wouldn't that do something for her nerves? Unbelievable darkness and ruin. <laughs> what you discover? Probably just some office space. I had a few questions scared. about the curse. Okay, but please, only a few questions. Never mind, I you got another question. Farewell. Do I have to go up there and buy a book about the supernatural? She did have a whole supernatural section up there. Let's go. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage like trinket dangles from the curtains. Put open. You see a dimly go. lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards, your shadow looming over it like an omen. Oh! A small, terrified, oh, escapes from Plaisance as she tries her best to look away, her round face buried in her hands. Maybe we should have talked to the daughter. She seems more level-headed. And there is something there. She would have probably seen it with an unbiased opinion. Or seen it informed unbiased Hi, opinions. Hi, detective. Are you here for more books? What are you doing now? It oh, oh, I found something. I thought this would fit you. Like, thanks for helping out. Not me. The city, I mean. Like a detective does. 
I got another Dick Mullen hat? I forgot she gave this to me in the first place, didn't she? Oh my. I, I guess it's just said that if you don't have it, she'll give you one. Cool. So, uh, you're just complete buzz now, huh? A second hat, yeah! Where, where'd you get it? Where'd you get all these hats? Just what Dick Mullen would ask. I got it from behind the curtains. I'm not really supposed to go there. Oh, I get it. I look just like Dick Mullen, except I'm an actual police officer. Yes, I bet it looks good on you. Really serious. Right, I have to get back to my homework now. Before Mum Bye, see you around, Annette. And thanks for the hat. I actually like that hat. Gives me encyclopedia. Although this gives me plus two logic. Minus one perception, though. Okay, uh... You know what? I'm not gonna worry about the shirt. Let's just go in. This is a ridiculous pry bar. That indeed is what it is. The vaguely androgynous picture of a man. I totally thought that was like a witch, like someone from Dishonored or something. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Broke into the commonar department. <laughs> Do I get a bonus of breaking down doors every time I break down a door? Unlock the door with the key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Open the door and enter. Okay, we have a conversation with Kim, I guess. What is this place? Lieutenant stares at the dusty training equipment. Oh, we should have gotten in there further. But yeah, this is some kind of makeshift gym. Lots of weights, punch bag. I think this may be the Artem Meteps boxing club for young athletes. I think you're right. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. Mm -hmm. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Some specks of dust shimmer in a faint beam of daylight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. Mm -hmm. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason no one's been here for ages? Yeah, let's not dismiss supernatural stuff, because that's when you get jumped by the stuff. Yes, because it's closed. Uh -huh. <laughs> you need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? Hmm. But what if I want to look for supernatural stuff? What if I want to punch the bags? Sand is dripping from a punching bag. Dripping? How long has it been dripping? Shouldn't it be empty? Citius Fortis, the rest is worn off. Wait, hang on. There was something there. It smells like leather and sweat. Someone's been here then? A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. Okay, this sounds There are no bad. collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. No collars. Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbells. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Heh, <laughs> physical estimate so low. So low. Why not wall bars? They look unsafe. Ooh, what's this? Shot put ball. Oh, that's going to be heavy to carry around my pockets all day. Maybe we should pawn it off. Creepy. Hallways blocked by old window pane panes and debris. Looks like the remains of the 24th window repair... Uh, 24 hour window repair shop. Creepy. We're going to get jumped. 
this isn't that kind of game, but are we gonna get jumped? Wow, animals stare you in the dark, stuff and mounted. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. The audio cues, these mannequins. Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Ah, so we could get killed. I see stuff here. Getting increasingly creepier. Warbly noises. Naked mannequin torso. Strange yellow color. But where are the clothes it used to display? Probably being worn by someone else right now. Blue velvet, soft to the touch. Moth bitten. Ooh, I should have hit tab earlier. There's a lot here. Money! Is this Emma's atelier? Who? I can't remember. A dusty oh. radio computer Here it is. sleeps on its wired frame, forgotten and unused. Its keyboard has a rectangular on off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. Mm. Another radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone in sight. Mm. What he means is that these things cost money. Why would anyone just leave it behind? This is the Ream Civic radio computer, model RC5120, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible printer. I'm gonna step away for a moment. I'm gonna investigate before I open this up. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, Elf ears, sketches, sword. and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. This was supposed to be a game, so I guess it was a fancy one. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin and even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. You should adopt one of those welkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a welkin. I kind of want my expression back. One of the welkins towering among the rest appears to be different however examine it it's important it's vara hamira a high welkin his face white and scarred like cracked marble this is clearly a welkin supremacist <laughs> the note <laughs> says all non-welkin races will be purged the haldor the twarg the humans and even headless men all of them purged Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. Oh, An no. inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Mm -hmm. One that was a Welkin supremacist. <laughs> mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Ah, it's like the Welkin's facial hair. <laughs> So this has been education. Now let's move on from the Wilkins. This clearly just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? All gone. Ah. Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried-up riverbeds. Abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark. Carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers. Boreal dvorg. Yurts under the snow. Great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way. Like eggnog. Or morphine. A much-needed respite from our own world. That's an interesting way to describe eggnog. And morphine. Dark and cold, but feeling cozy in its own way. <laughs> A pinned postcard reads, The heat death scenario. A desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. All right, let's inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, 
and GPI span the market-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Uh -huh. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. I've been assuming this whole time that this is all stuff for a video game, but what if this is... <laughs> what if there's like some kind of cabal of elves just trying to take over the world? Clearly they're not doing it quite in the grand way that they're expecting if, uh, if this is their base. Minimi stands for a mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago but failed. Keep reading what happened. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Hmm. Looks like they didn't make it. The tent looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness. Okay, so this is the production for a video the chalkboard says. See the prod schedule filament for details. Expect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, the biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. Ah, man, I gotta get back to... Tabletop RPG stuff. Even we're not using physical tabletops anymore. That one Shadows one shot has been left behind for four months now. I need to finish that at least, and I do want to do more tabletop RPGs. They're fun, even if they take a lot of time. Even I'm winging them half the time. And I do want to do some on stream eventually, but man, I definitely need to come up with more visuals and stuff. Maps, that kind of stuff. Shoes and a puddle of melting snow. Can I not take the shoes? Thorbos Creek. Of course they do. Cans? What is that? Postcard. Let's check that postcard real fast. It just looks brown. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia-toned. Midtown traffic passes. Overhead, the ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into the beige midday mist. Vapor rising from the delta on which the district was built. The postcard is prepaid. A ball, play for, a ball used for playing shot put. A favorite pastime of elderly gentlemen. Are these things pretty heavy? You feel like you should hold on to this and make it use of it. To sell such beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin. Well, let's find the old men and see if they want this ball. An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes. Folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. Ah, we're here. This must be where the entity lives. Knock on metal. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Knock on harder. Still nothing. No one's home. Knock on harder! Those curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist hurts now. Ow. If this is really an entrance to the chimney, then there must be a furnace somewhere as well. Maybe there's another way to get in. Can you please try to refrain from attacking random things? I could try. Blow gently on your bruised knuckles. Thanks. In any case, there's no way we can get in right now. Let's investigate further. Knock even harder! No. <laughs> Let's not. Bent metal. Broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. You are... The destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. Gaze upon me, stuff and despair. Kudos. Anti object task force. <laughs> okay, let's look at that. I feel like that's something that might, might actually be useful with how often I try to break into stuff, I guess. Uh, let's see. Take a look at your hands. See how bruised they are? See those little scars? This is Exhibit A. The material world's holding you back. Containers, mailboxes, doors, chairs. They are all your enemies. Always have been. Atoms themselves are in on the conspiracy, forming shapes and structures that you hate. You are energy stuck in a body. You are spirit trapped in matter. Break free. Beat up that lamppost. Let it know just how much objects suck. 
Ah, <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's fun. I want this. Okay, we should be wrapping it up soon, but I feel like I need to get to a more conclusive ending for this place. Money! Skis with slipstream, paint on the laminated top cover. Steel rotor blades be bearing a slipstream logo. Production schedule, fill in memory. Should we run this, or...? The cube-like crisscrosses of filaments feels oddly fragile in your hands. Its intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads, Production schedule. Note! This filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. It's obviously meant to be read here, but I wonder if that's a trap, or if this machine is old and broken. But they did say, why would anyone leave it here, implying that it's still valuable? This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. Hold on, how do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes, students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. Cool. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies are what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Of course, the anatomy of the curse. No. <laughs> so dealing with something medical here. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. You know, I was blanking out. Of course it's not medical. They're just using veins and capillaries as uh, metaphors. And heck, since it said like... Here, I think that makes it a simile, a cardiovascular system. I just kind of blanked out. I was like, fanciness, something science, must be medical. They must have had massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Wait, who's the game master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the game master's frequency. Then... Who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. And it looks like we were still able to call in. There, under there was the someone stations there. stations suggest people across six Isolas would be playing. Muindi, Insulinda, Kotla, Grad, Samara, and even Il Mara. Maybe I should keep a list of all these. Can't remember which ones are like countries or blah. All of this is gone. Left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. That's harsh. Just because the odds are low doesn't mean that they couldn't have done it. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. <laughs> yeah. The cost of air whiff alone must have been huge. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. I have not... I do not know what the Orane is actually is. Like, I thought maybe it was a place, considering that there are people who are Oranese, but... You know, like, in real life, we can see someone's Asian, but that's not a specific country. Or worse, you would say they're white, and it's like, uh, what kind of white? <gasps> the bear fridge with glowing eyes! Take money. Take morale. 
I will take your morale and use it to feed myself. Looks like I didn't have to buy that plus three after all. And here I was worried about running out. Ice cream maker defrosted and unplugged. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment. I thought it was a polar bear. It's a literal the door ice is bear. Covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. Okay, well, I, a literal bear statue meant to look like ice, so I guess it's not literally an ice bear, but... The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? Does this mean it's literally a, a bear? This must be the giant ice bear fridge that Suna mentioned. Look inside. Actually, if it's a bear statue, is it literally a bear or is it not? Is it technically a bear or is it technically not? It's one of those. It's technical, not literal. You know, I'm going to stop fussing with that word. I just know that most people use it wrong now. Literally. I hate it. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes Ooh, it's to green. you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Well, uh, I'm not going to tell him to relax. If the bear starts moving, I'd like for him to shoot it. Actually, no, don't shoot it. That would probably get us both killed. <laughs> Look inside the fridge, though. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Yeah, I can see that. But where's the filament memory? It's not here. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers in there. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. Take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. What? Why can't I just read it? Hey, I can't see the off-site copy anywhere. Check the shelves again. Someone must have taken it. What does the note say? What does the note say? What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in the light. So they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. <laughs> what is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. Lieutenant points at the red snarky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. catastrophic. Okay, let's check the note. Hope we don't get jumped while we're looking at the note. Handwritten note we found from the giant ice bear fridge. Bear some marks from the fruit shaped kitchen magnets that were used to scare to the refrigerator door. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? I don't know. Lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Let's read the note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. Who's S? Who's the illiterate ginger kid? You find the filament memory of oh, the offside S copy as in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Sully Swaf. Uh, frozen ice cream maker. Oh, it was that thing upstairs, wasn't it? Who's the litter ginger? kid really you don't have a single guess he looks at you the corner of his mouth curved into a smug grin you mean kuno oh i'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory even if he doesn't know what to do with it he'd probably try to pawn it for speed based on our encounter uh someone moved it but who and why like i mean he to protect it yes but why not bring it to her sulislav wasn't he one of Miss Lucan and Kilda's co-workers? I remember coming across this name when we were reading her personal log. Interesting. Okay, let's put the note away. We're probably good here. Well collapsed and accessible now. What is this? A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. 
Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. Opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. Let's hope you don't get kicked in the face. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Look inside. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber. Upstairs. Hmm. The echo is so prominent. It's impossible to discern what the voices are saying or what's producing them. What are you doing? He asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, really? Maybe it's coming from behind those safety curtains we saw upstairs. Uh. Are we going to yell hello? Let's do it. You muster all your strength and yell. <laughs> your throat can produce little more than a dry croak. Awkward, since you already had a drink. A lifetime of smoking and drinking will do that to you. The chatter from the chimney continues on as before. You seem to have made no impression on whatever's up there. <sighs> then again, maybe it's worth actually trying something up there. Hmm. Maybe you should let your voice rest, officer. Try again later. But, 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 dress code, Modus Mullen. Eh. Let's not kick it, we might lose HP again. More stuff! What is this? A check. Or not. There's a hidden doorway here. Wow. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Ah. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's Where? too dark to see in. Look, there's a hole in the wall. Shine light on the hidden compartment. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Heck yeah, I do. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs. Rummaging around, you find rusty rifles hidden away. Inspect them. I'm not going to yell them out if they're rusty. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt-action model with a fine woodstock, in better cosmetic order than the others. An old Belmagrave rifle. Revolutionary era. Oh. Prized for its reliability more than its accuracy. The rest are probably Belmagraves too. Just too damaged to be sure. Take it. You're a police officer. Police officers carry guns. This old Belmagrave looks okay. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. The lieutenant whispers as he admires the rifle. His eyes are gleaming. Isn't that the same gun that fired the fatal bullet? It's the same type of weapon, yes. A breech loader. But it's not the same gun. This one's been out of order for years. I'm afraid our search for the real murder weapon must continue. Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. We have a bullet, right? I don't know if it'll fit in this gun, but uh, can we get this thing in working order? What does this mean? A rifle here? It means there are firearms, breech loaders, still laying around in Martinez. This could prove useful in our case against Ruby for Titus. Men are easily swayed by the sight of a rifle. Yes, and those guys decide to kill us. He <sighs> likes this find. All right, let's leave. Check out this thing over here. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Interesting. I don't think we would have seen this if it weren't for our flashlight. I'm not sure we could click on it. We can't see the room. We might have to manually walk in there otherwise. A frozen ice cream maker that's still running. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Am I going to uh, break whatever's inside if I crank 
if I turn the ice cream crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. Okay, see, so we can crack open the lid. Um, is there anything that could boost our physical energy, Matt? Ooh. A broken bell in the grave from ages past. It's a four shot bolt action military rifle with a wooden frame. Neat! Uh, let's see. Paint threshold. Okay, I was hoping it would be physical instrument. I'm not gonna bother. I don't have enough physical instrument for this. Let's this just try orange it. machine. White check? White check. Like an old submarine. Ice groans and howls <laughs> under the strain of your giant Kvalzund multi tool until the lid cracks open. Blue electric lights come to life. We had like a 90 something percent chance earlier and failed. Now we have like. <laughs> what was that? Like 7%? I actually was not paying attention. And we succeeded. Inside, on a frosty platform, lies an object, intricate and foreign. Left there for a sub-zero beauty sleep. A filament memory with the words off-site copy written on its side. Take it. You gently lift the cube from its frosty bedding, careful not to damage it. We should take it back to Miss Lucan and Kilda as soon as possible. I'm not sure how well unused filaments tolerate room temperatures. Yes, but aren't you curious to know what's on the precious filament? There's a radio computer upstairs. Close lead. A few more things to investigate, and then we're gonna call it for tonight. Nose of Fed. Two cables are plugged. Oh, into I forgot. The box. Physical instrument was the lower because of my health. To the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Huh. Unplug the giant red cable. An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. I wonder this would have messed things up if we un. Plug this one. Let's unplug this one as well. Something close to you dies with a soft elect. Soft electric purr. Money! Oh jeez, this place ke keeps going deeper. Or is that a dead end? Cello window. People's feet shuffling behind the streets. Fascinating. Insane mesh tank top. Plus one drama. Intercom wires running to the breaker box. Uh. I thought that was locked. How did we get in? Okay, uh, you know what? There's one last thing with the Rio computer, but I'm really running out of time. Like, really running out of time. So, we're going to actually save it for next time. Although, I'm going to check the fridge real fast. Now that's off. Not going on, Miss The bear's eyes are dead and empty. Wait, wait, hang on. What the is it? The bear's eyes are dead and empty. Ice inside the fridge slowly melting. Okay, the ice is melting. I thought the ice cream was melting. I thought I just committed like a cardinal sin there. I wonder, if I turn off the power to those two devices, did it affect anything upstairs? Okay, we're going to check out the radio computer next time. But yeah, we're going to call it quits here for today. Yeah, we're going to check out the radio computer. Uh, Got to get sooner back her filament cubes. Got to run both filament cubes in here. Got to check with Alice for the, the serial number on the armor plates. And that's all that comes to mind for now. But yeah, stay safe. Maybe I'll see you all around. And yeah, until next time. Goodbye.